Hey everyone, how you doing? I uh, hope you all are enjoying the videos, all the baking. Uh, thank you so much for your comments, all your likes, all your appreciation goes a long way. So we're gonna do some scoring. I've got two batards. Uh, they're just about ready to go to the oven. <clears throat> I've preheated my oven to its max setting, 550 degrees, and I preheat the Dutch ovens with that. Now I'm using here a Challenger bread pan, um, but you can also use something like this. This is a Dutch oven from Smithy. Uh, you can use something like this, Le Creuset, but also you can just use the cheap lodge or whatever you've got in your house. So a couple tools real quick. I use these metal blades. They're curved, they're cheap, cost about $7. Now there's nothing wrong with the fancy ones that you see, but personally I just like a clean one. Um, I'm a big fan of one cut on the bread. So when we score our bread, we're creating a place where there's no tension. That's gonna allow the bread to rise in the oven. Once it's fully risen, then that crust will start to form. So if you don't score your bread, you tend to get a very large hole from the top of the loaf to the skin. Uh, you also might get a blowout in, in the loaf. So it's very important. If you don't have a lamb, this works very well. It's a little serrated knife. You could also use scissors just to cut the top. The best place to start is anywhere, so I suggest just, just getting it going. I also like to use this. This is a little thermogun. So what I'll do with this is just to check the temperature to make sure I'm right where I want. And I'm at about 500 degrees on this pan. So it's a little, could be a little hotter, but that's okay. I like to use a bit of parchment. This way, if I put the bread down and it's not where I want it, it's easier to adjust. Um, not necessary. You could also use semolina or dust it with a bit of flour. I just don't like that cooked flour on the bottom. So my loaf has been in the fridge for 18 hours. It's got a good spring back. It's risen, but it's held its shape. It looks very nice. So I'm just gonna gently let that flop out. And I'm going to take my blade and I'm gonna make one clean cut. Now, if I cut this straight down the middle, the bread's gonna open sort of like this. If I cut it on an angle, it's gonna open more like that and give me a more pronounced ear. So with the blade, I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna make one nice cut right down the middle, okay? Now I'm gonna take that lid from the Dutch oven, which was also preheated. I'm gonna stick that back on. And I like to cheat this a little bit. This is a spray bottle, bottle of water. I just give a couple sprays onto the lid and that's gonna kickstart our steam. This is gonna go in the oven. And I'm gonna do one more. So just to show you that again, we're gonna put our parchment on. I'm gonna take my loaf of bread, gently lower it onto the parchment. Adjust it if you need to. See, this is where the parchment comes in handy. If you want to do two cuts, you can. Um, a lot of people do those fancy cuts and cut 50 cuts in it. it looks great, great, nothing wrong with it. My, my personal preference is one nice cut because that's gonna allow your loaf to expand to the maximum potential. The more cuts you put in it, the less it can open up in one spot, the less volume you get inside. So again, clean, confident. Instead of using the whole blade, I'm only gonna try and use about that much. So just the tip of the blade. Give a nice score. Put your lid back on. Give this a spray. And now I'm gonna put this in the oven for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna come back and we'll take a look at it in 20 minutes. So now that my bread's in the oven, I'm just gonna take a moment to explain. We preheat the oven to its maximum setting. We preheat that Dutch oven, that cast iron, whatever you've got, because you're trying to build the thermal mass. You want all that heat absorption into the pan. When the bread hits the pan, it's gonna start to rise from the heat going into the pan. Now these Challenger pans, they also tend to radiate the heat down, which will give a bit more rise. But, but most importantly, whatever you're using has to have a tight fitting lid. You wanna trap that steam in. The steam lands on the loaf, it's gonna rise, 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 rise. Once it hits maximum potential, the loaf is now risen, just started to color, but it also hasn't dried out or formed a crust. If we let it dry out, it's gonna have a crust and it won't open to its full potential, but it's, but it's also going to um, be a really thick crust and we want just a really thin one. So as I said before, oven is set to 540 degrees maximum. 
take the lid off, give it a score, put the lid on in the oven, and now I drop my oven temperature down to about uh, 500. Now my oven, uh, the thermostat doesn't actually work, so you'll have to play around with your oven and see what's right. Um, I'm assuming that I'm at about 470 degrees, but I'm not quite certain. So while that's in there, we're gonna take a rest. You know, you got 20 minutes, and we'll come back and check on those loaves soon. Okay, so my bread's been in the oven for 20 minutes. I'm gonna take the lid off and then we're gonna put it back in the oven. So I always try to open it away from me so that I don't get hit with a burst of steam. Hot steam is not fun. Okay, you can see we got a nice opening there. Getting some good color development. What you're looking for the loaf has risen to its maximum potential and it's just started to take on color. You don't want it to be too, too dark. And another one. You can see the steam coming off it. You can see we got nice fermentation bubbles there. So that's a good sign we've managed all the things properly, okay? I'm gonna put those back in the oven, same temperature, and they're gonna run for about 15 minutes. So in total, I'm looking for around 35, 36 minutes for my bake, but again, your oven could vary. Um, the pans are using, the size of the loaf, and all those things, so it's just a matter of practice. Repeat, do it a few times, and you'll have it in no time. We'll come back, give me 15 minutes, and then we're gonna check on the final product. Okay, so my first two loaves came out of the oven. Um, I fired them at 540, dropped the temperature down to 500, and then I let that go for 22 minutes. After 22 minutes, I took the lid off, and I just finished them, uh, it was 14 minutes with the lid off. So you pick it up, it should feel nice and light. You can also hear that sound, that it's very hollow. It doesn't feel heavy. Another visual clue is the color. Obviously, it's colored very nicely. Now, I like my, my breads fairly dark. Um, I make a little bit higher, uh, I use a little bit more water in my bread, so I bake them a little bit darker so that I make sure that the interior is fully cooked. You're also gonna find that you have a flavor in the crumb, which is the inside, and a flavor in the crust. Now, that flavor will start to permeate together as your loaf cools, and you'll get a better contrast, a better flavor development. But if you don't bake it dark enough, you'll sort of have that, have that one tone. If you're using a lot of whole grains like I am, you also want to get that full flavor out of, out of, the, out of the grain. So I'm going to bring this up close so we can take a look. You can see I've got a nice fermentation bubbles. All those little tiny pockets of gas trapped in there. Got a little ear. Nice color. And here's my other loaf. Again, same idea, bottoms are nice. If you're finding that the bottoms of your loaves are getting too dark, one trick that I like to do is just put a sheet pan, then put your rack on top and fire your breads on the rack just over, and that'll prevent you from getting that dark bottom. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these off, and I'm going to allow these to cool on a cooling rack. It is really, really, really tempting to slice into this right now, but you know what? You're gonna be better off if you let it cool for at least an hour. Thank you so much. Happy baking. As always, if you like my videos, drop a comment, tag me in your pictures, use the hashtag Matthew James Duffy. Um, thank you so much for following along. I love baking with you all. Love you guys. Awesome.